Okay, so the new DJI Mavic 3. Now, although I'm aware this drone did come out uh, a few months ago in 2021, there are some very newly updated features brought to the DJI Mavic 3 and specifically in the new version of 01.00.05 highlighting some significant uh, updates and features brought to the new DJI Mavic 3 and this review will be based on some of those features and we'll also try to look at how does it feel to fly for the first time because I am not a drone operator but just to brush off the new updates among them are added quick shots including droney rocket circle helix boomerang and asteroid added panorama mode capable of shooting in high resolution added burst shooting added digital zoom for normal video mode added color display assist for d-log added 4k 60 fps and manual ei adjustment for master shots added quick transfer added zoom and d-log for focus track so a lot of updates here to consider before flying, especially if we want to um, take account to how it does play a factor in the stability of flight, but mostly on that focus track feature as following a subject is much harder than it looks. So I do recommend updating this feature before anything else, unless you wanna, you know, crash. But I'll get to that part later in the video. Now this unit sent to us by DJI is the Fly More Combo. I do want to mention there is a Mavic 3 Cine and that has 5.1 422 Apple Pro Res HQ. So that in terms of image quality, there's um, a higher difference or a bigger difference in, in resolution with the Cine. And you also get the RC Pro, the Remote Control Pro, which essentially has the built-in uh, display in the remote control. But not to worry, it's still essentially the same drone. You still get the new dual Hasselblad cameras, one being a quarter inch telephoto sensor on the top, and on the bottom is a 4x3 inch 20 megapixel sensor. Many more sensors all around the body for better uh, obstacle avoidance. A very large 77 watt battery that comes out of the back here which is supposed to give you up to 46 minutes of flight time. It folds up very similarly to the Mavic 2 Pro and pretty much retains the overall size, but now with a bit more ground clearance when you set this on the ground and minimizes your chances of damaging the camera module. You also get this nice strap or muzzle to tuck away the propellers and keep those cameras nicely protected. Four variable ND filters, extra propellers, USB-C and lightning connectors and two other 77 watt battery along with a 3 bay charging dock all of which fits in nicely in this new designed bag that can also be turned into a backpack so very well packaged and planned here by DJI and I simply just can't wait to take this out now so let's get on with the flight and see how I get along with this drone now in terms of flight performance, there is a significant improvement from 20 meters per second from the Mavic 2 Pro to 21 meters per second in the Mavic 3. Um, that's still about only three kilometers difference, but there is a big significant improvement in ascent speed. So ascending up, I think it's about five meters per second in the Mavic 2 Pro, now in eight meters per second in the Mavic 3. So that's still about 30 kilometers going up, all the way up. The DJI Mavic 3 does about 20 meters per second, or 21 if I'm not mistaken. That's about 70 kilometers uh, an hour. So, Joe, can we, can we get this going? Okay, uh, I'm gonna do my best and try to keep up, but I think from that active track itself, uh, we won't have any issues when it comes to locking in the frame of the car. I'm gonna do some uh, something cinematic at least, something that we can st stitch into a sequence. So yeah, let's hope this works out. Now for this clip, I was trying to capture Joe's car being tracked by the auto track, and it did amazingly well as as far as keeping the car in frame, keeping up to the speed and the distance that was required even up to the point where Joe's car was off uh, the road and passing by all of these trees. Yep, it still continued to uh, keep the car in track. But as soon as something else was out of, uh, in the way, 
the tracking feature just fell off and I had to pan the camera on my own. But by far the most useful feature of this active track is being able to track subjects as you're parallaxing or rotating around a subject like Joe, how Joe is here right now. I'm barely putting any input aside from flying the drone to the left and it continually kept the car in frame. This was relatively very low speeds and it might change if you are flying a bit faster or driving a bit faster. Even to consider a rolling shutter, that, that was barely much of it. It did amazingly well and it's gotten to the point where it's kind of uh, nauseating when you're doing this many circles but it was a great test to to recognize how how well the Mavic 3 performed when you have uh, something locked on like this footage here right now and now here I am about to set it into sport mode and probably about to make the most biggest regret that I've done and yeah I'm just gonna let myself explain here and I just want to see how fast this um, drone can actually go but yeah, at this part, I was really, really impressed by how fast the drone could maneuver itself from left to right to even forward and backwards. So it, it was really, really way too fast for, for, my, for my experience level. It would, it's as if I was getting into that sports car Joe was driving and going full throttle without um, any traction control keeping me on the road. So it was kind of the same situation here where I was keen to see what it could do but you not know, take the correct precautions enough. Um, planning the shots up and and requiring myself the, uh, the amount of space needed for this, uh, for this shot. And the first attempt uh, was, was done well and second attempt is is what caused the crash. Bad news. I I set it into sport mode and it will switch off all the sensors like I just said I just said just now. And it crashed. It crashed into my foot because it was about to hit uh, Joe's car. So I made sure that it didn't hit the car thankfully there is no major damage except from the propellers that i had to replace um, there is a small plastic stuck inside the rotors now but uh, from what i can see there's no major damage and hopefully it can still fly because we're gonna try and get this uh, piece of plastic out and once we can do that we can fly again hopefully we can fly again if I don't, I'm so sorry, DJI. <laughs> I'm dedicating to the review here, so yeah, that's just I'm crossing my fingers, hoping hoping it can actually fly again. Let's go back to the workshop and try to get this piece of plastic out. You managed to get the piece out, and I just want to replace the propeller. So it's kind of neat, but it does have an indicator for the parallel propellers. Let's hope we can fly again. It's that simple, literally. And in theory, we should be able to fly again. I mean, look at that. It really just banged up the propellers. I'm sure the sensors are working fine. I'm hoping it's working fine. Let's Give this a shot. Right, moment of truth. Moment of truth. Oh. Thank God. Thank God. Okay, if you're not ready to put it in sport mode, don't ever put it into sport mode because you, it, you just cancel out all of the sensors and it doesn't stop for you. We're gonna keep to open airspace this time and make sure there's nothing around us if we were to fly a bit faster than normal. Yeah, let's continue getting greater shots. 
shaking off some nerves. I wanted to redeem myself in capturing really good footage and better airspace this time around. So I went to uh, the stadium of Shalam and captured this really, really good uh, footage of the stadium. And we also managed to get ourselves around the go-kart track that we, we have shot before. And yeah, it's, re it's just a really nice perspective seeing it from uh, the air. And we also uh, were lucky enough to, to capture a drift session that was held nearby as well. And that's, I mean, what's not to like about cars going sideways really, really fast. But yeah, I'm keeping this drone really, really high up just so I don't uh, fly into in anything. I didn't have any ND filters on at this moment. So thankfully it was quite a cloudy day. To some extent, uh, the camera did its job to compensate for the uh, exposure levels and still kept everything very well exposed. And this was another attempt using the active track of my friend here with his motorbike and doing that parallaxing move left to right and still keeping the subject in the middle. Again, very little input here aside from uh, panning the drone left to right and the camera keeping everything in focus. I did also try to uh, follow him but the elevations of this road was not uh, ideal for me to fly forward and yeah i was still shaking from the crash uh, earlier but i only did this because i we had time to spare also because of my car was broke down so we couldn't go anywhere and yeah this was a was a very fun day minusing the fact that i crashed the drone okay so we are here at a very nice scenery and I do want to get somebody to fly this drone with more experience because I just don't have that um, flight hours. I have someone someone here, Led, come on in. This is Led and he has been very experienced in flying drones. How long have you been flying? All right, I've been flying since um, 2012, uh, since the Phantom. Uh, but I don't fly all the time, but uh, I can fly. When I say fly, I fly. When I normally fly, I normally fly for uh, tourism. So um, I can't wait actually to try this out. What's your experience with drones? Like, what kind of drones have you flown so far? Uh, fan I forgot which. Two Phantoms, actually three Phantoms. Definitely the last one was Phantom 3. Uh, then there's the Mavic 2. And I guess it's gonna be my third or fourth uh, model, I guess. <laughs> I can't wait to try the Mavic 3 actually because uh, from the look of it, it looks different man from the I mean the size the size compromise the size is, yes. the size is yeah. quite the same as the yeah. Mavic 2 but it, apparently this the, you get it flies up to 70 kilometers now yeah. I mean like don't put it into sport mode guys because I, I I made a mistake for doing that without having the the right amount of space to do it but we have a lot of space today and hopefully led here can get the the shots that we intended because like it, it's something about controlling the left side, especially when it, comes, when it comes to panning the camera, that requires some finesse. What's the main uh, priorities before flying? What what do you have to bear in mind? All right, it's always uh, the airspace. Wherever you're flying, the airspace is really important. If you like here, open space, you can fly anywhere. You can set on GPS. But if you're flying in the city, it's a different thing. Uh, you get a lot of interference. So I highly suggest to switch off your GPS and fly manual but it's better to have a spotter so you need to know where your drone is flying and everything uh, what is a spotter a spotter is another person to spot for you because you most of the time you'll be looking at the monitor someone else need to be looking uh, you know up to Check see it, you looking see, looking yeah, it ph physically right physically where it is because uh once it goes up it's just a speck of dust so yeah you know, yeah but uh the most important thing is before you fly Wherever you fly, always know the topography of the area, the place that you're flying. So you need to know if there's any cables, if there's any buildings, uh, if you're flying uh, in, in the jungle, uh, you have the canopies as well. So that's where the spotter comes in. So uh, for today, like, what can you do for us? All right, so uh, first thing first, um, I'm gonna do this uh, 
Miami Vice shots. If you watch the old Miami Vice, the one going close to yeah, the water. Yeah, so you always open up with the water, then uh, it open up, then it will tail up and uh, show you the horizon. So we're gonna do it here, and we're gonna do it somewhere else here. We are at Kuala Kuala Kubu. Kuala Kubu. We are at the uh, Pangan Slango, the Slango Dam. The Slango uh, Dam, right? Yeah, this is a sneak area, the road especially. A lot of car shots have been done here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of aerial shots as well, uh, used on those uh, commercials. Uh, so we're gonna try and do some with the Mavic 3. Cool. Okay, so DJI does uh, provide a set of really nice ND filters. And since it's quite sunny out there, we're gonna fix the 16 version on, on, on it. Just snap it off and it's magnetic and just snap that on. That's basically it. And you're ready to fly. Let's fly. Okay, I'm gonna do another shot. This is my favorite. Lah. And pull up. Yeah. Mm. So from this point, all the way until I get you. You can chop any. Yeah, so we're gonna do is <laughs> okay, uh, talk about the procedure of like uh, landing the drones because like landing the drone. All right, so usually what I do, uh, I look at um, the topography. Always look at the area where you're flying. Uh, find home where, which is pretty much where you are. And then uh, from there on, what you want to do is you want to bring it uh, closer to where you are. And then uh, from there on, you can land. So the idea of it is to come down in levels instead of like fully dropping down. So you can manage any turbulence that might be up there and you can't see with our bare eyes. And this is just to uh, avoid any wind draft as you're going down instead of just going all the way from one centered point. So you kind of want to bring it down in steps, just like a step going through uh, each level. Wow, this is my first time hearing this. I can hear the fan, this is good for cooling. The thing is with flying drone is that you're really close to the sun. So it gets hit up. Once your drone hits up, it drains the battery as well. And it's not really good for the system. So this is good to know. Uh, it doesn't affect the sound. You don't need sound from the sky. <laughs> I'm really liking the look at it. The feel is different. The weight is really good. Uh, it feels more robust. Uh, at, for a consumer, it doesn't feel consumer. It's like um, it's it's like SLR. Well, you know, you know when it's um, uh, consumer entry and when it's uh, actually a pro entry. This is feeling pro. I really like the I really like the finishing. Uh, I mean, it's priced like a prosumer cam yeah, camera. True. It's, it's, it costs like nine thousand ringgit, so it's close to the. This is not the Cine version. There's a Cine version that's I think twice the price, and that that I think is cost near the Inspire. Inspire is yeah. about twenty five, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, you don't need Inspire anymore. I mean, this thing shoots four K. <laughs> <laughs> we have yet to do five point one K and also D log. Mm. So. Probably the next shots. Let's, let's yeah. try to do that. So, uh, we're gonna try to get some uh, spot smoke here. Let's see what happens. So this is the second location, and it's gonna be above the bridge. And we're gonna try and fly underneath the bridge to get that like, something exciting with shot. Let's go. Yo, oh, dude, this is fast as hell. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay, let's take it for a spin. Faster than you, yeah, than you anticipated. Yeah, dude, this is too fast. <laughs> well, it's nice. It's fine, it's fine. It's 70 kilometers. 70 kilometers <laughs> an hour. 
That's pretty fast actually. 21 meters oh, yeah, it, second. It, it, it even goes down fast as well. Yep. So let's do that again. There's no sensors by the way, so. Yeah. Careful. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Okay, let's line it up. See if we are lined up. Yes, we are. Alright, we are. Let's roll. And go. So fast. Right, we got some nice shot over there. There it is, it's coming. Okay, you're getting the whole, the whole bridge. Right. Yeah, nice. I'm trying to control it without tilting it. That's why uh, when you go too fast, you tilt it, right? I'm gonna strive it really fast to the side just to see how, how the stabili stability is like. It's not bad actually. Not bad, not bad. Dude, I really love this Mavic 3, man. Consumers, forget it, man. Let's go pro. This is pro, man. Love it. It's agile. I like the stability of it. I'm liking the Mavic 3 a lot. Uh, I really feel, uh, well, you have to master the control a little bit, but definitely it gives you a uh, sense of power. We're, we're gonna try and fly underneath the bridge. Right, let's go. Oh, shit. Right, did it. Woo. Would you buy the drone? Yeah, uh, now, as you can see, my energy is different now. After the smart, uh, spot mode, uh, it really gives me a better view of the camera, uh, how it handles. Uh, we also tried the D-Log, can't wait to see uh, how the DJI uh, LUT looks like. Uh, overall, so far, um, I'm liking this more and more, man. Uh, I'm, I'm really highly thinking about this. I was thinking to get the DJI uh, FPV, uh, but this is more suitable for traveling and everything. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see how the, the output, let's see what happens. As for the footages I was able to capture at night, I mean, aside from the darker parts of the image showing a slight noise and grain, but that's just a given shooting very, very low light. Uh, the brighter parts of the image compensated really, really well. And as long as you keep the drone continuously moving, you won't see out of anything out of the norm. As overall, it's as good as it gets, guys. This image is just beautiful. Still capturing some dynamic range all the way at the back of the image and compensating well from the yellows and the white on each uh, type of lights on the street. This on its own was just impressive. And the shot here of the Sunway Clio Hotel as well. Yeah, you can see a bit of uh, noise and grain on the right and left side of the image, but it's still a uh, really, really good footage overall. Now here's a bit of me flying around the car on my on the rooftop and trying to descend uh descend properly it's just a really, really it's just a really really weird perspective i've 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 grown to love more and more as i spent more time flying this drone at this point i think this was my second day flying i was already falling in love with it so yeah what are my overall thoughts with this drone the dji mavic 3 I mean, it's priced the way it's priced because it's sitting in between the prosumers and consumers or professionals and normal consumers. And if that sets it very close to the Inspire. I think the Inspire costs a few thousand more, but that's a way bigger drone and that it's nowhere to the form factor of, uh, of this Mavic 3. My closing statements of, of this drone will be, I really want to fly more now. I mean, I'm, I'm in a position or a dilemma where I'm thinking of buying one because in my experience of production or with cameras in general, I've always uh, tended to hiring a pilot because you just want someone much more experienced than you are uh, getting the footage that you need. I mean, there is a learning curve definitely to acquire those uh, skills. Give yourself some time and you will get there. 
I am not paid by DJI to say any of this. I want to make it clear that I want to buy this drone or I want this drone now, not just because of its form factor or its, its image quality, but uh, the advantage you get from a different perspective flying and also the safety precautions that it has now with all the sensors built in, it should uh, get you to fly with ease of mind. Just don't make the mistakes that I did, uh, like how I, how I uh, explained in this video. It's because of that I wanted to push, push it to its limits and see what it could actually do. I mean, after all, we are conducting a review here, so I do want to apologize to DJI for crashing their drone. I'm just thankful that it could still fly and it is not such a significant damage that was done to it. There are some small scuffs on the body of the drone, but that's just a process of making these reviews and I hope anybody who's watching understand that it, I was just I was not trying to be careless I was not trying to go above and beyond it was just me trying to understand the do's and don'ts when it comes to flying and I think for anybody who's watching those are the main considerations you might have to take as well before you buy a drone or before you fly a drone so yeah, those, um, those are just my main thoughts. My negative thoughts, I guess, from, from flying the Mavic 3. Weirdly, weirdly, I don't have one. I don't have a negative thought on, on this drone. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, I mean, image quality speaks for themselves. I, I, I don't have to speak about highlights or tones here and there without having your eyes just to trust what it does. And uh, if you get the fly more combo with the ND filters, it helps a lot in sunny countries like Malaysia or Singapore. It tones down the sun's brightness very, very much and captures a very good high dynamic range. And yeah, I don't have any negative thoughts about this drone. I really don't. I wish I did. It's really robust, feels very premium. It looks very premium. Yeah, I, I just feel like it's very grown up now. DJI, very well done for, for always improving from one product to the other. Those are my final thoughts and I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed that review. Comment down below what you guys think uh, about the Mavic 3 and if you were to consider buying one if yourself. Uh, I will be leaving uh, links in the description if you want to find out more about the DJI Mavic 3. But yeah, that's enough from me. See you in the next video and peace out.